When students go to university to study mathematics, the undergraduate fantasy that we teach is that we have this bedrock of axioms and everything is built solely on these axioms through deductive argument and that we have a towering edifice of brilliant mathematics, all of which is solidly established in an incontrovertible way. That's a beautiful kind of conception. The problem is that's not true. It's not even close to true. It's almost impossible to live up to that fantasy. Some of the top mathematicians in the world have been looking at this as a philosophy question, have been actually working with AI. If you start always inputting your ideas, your proofs into a machine, at what point does the machine do a better job of helping guess the next step? Obviously, this is something very hot right now. It's moving fast. And the question becomes, well, what is it we want from proofs? What have we historically needed from proofs? What is it we believe when something's proved? And how does AI change that? These are massive questions that, that are popping out of woodwork right now. I'm Andrew Granville. I work in analytic number theory. When I was young, I worked on Fermat's last theorem before it was proved. Today, I work in ideas of L functions and multiplicative functions, but I'm interested in all different aspects, including computational and algorithmic questions. I've long been interested in popular writing in mathematics. My sister is a writer. We've been thinking it would be fun to do a graphic novel in mathematics. So we worked together to develop it and eventually wrote it. In the graphic novel, I felt like there was room for us to develop philosophy. A philosopher of mathematics, Michael Hallett, read it and he was very interested in the way we portrayed mathematics being done. You cannot prove them because you cannot go back to anything more primitive than those propositions themselves. They are not in need of justification. Talking to Michael, I realized there is this debate of what it is we mean when we say we've got something proved. So Aristotle said that to prove something is true, to establish it's true, your argument should rest on what he called primitives, things you already knew to be true. And eventually, there's got to be some atoms there, the so-called axioms that you rest all your arguments on. The basic things you cannot define, so like point, line, plane, if you're talking about geometry, you can't define those. What you do instead is lay down some axioms about them. The, the phrase that comes to my mind is, these truths are self-evident. Um, which, you know, is interesting at many levels when you compare it to mathematics. I mean, there's a certain arrogance about it. The way it's traditionally been done is that we publish papers, and those papers are put in journals or books, and those books are put in libraries. And then when we wanted to verify a truth, we'd go to the library and we'd check out the book and we'd see if it was exactly as we wanted it. It would help us gain new understanding, or we'd have to revise what was in those books. Today, the artificial intelligence that is used for proof, they're doing something similar, except they're going to store that information within the program. So programs like Lean have a library of things already proven based on axioms, and then with suitable work, and it's complicated, a mathematician can input their proof into Lean and verify all the steps are logical, at least according to Lean. So what does Lean do? I think I have a proof of a theorem, and I want a formal proof. I've written something that I'm a bit iffy about. I don't want to get into all of the details of the ins and outs of, you know, if, as you sort of go back through the tree of knowledge, everything's really going to work. So the idea is to input that into Lean. It acts like an obnoxious colleague who just won't let go. If they don't understand, they will not stop pestering you for annoying questions. But sometimes those colleagues actually help you because by explaining it to them, you realize, oh, yeah. Oh, and it's simpler than I thought. And there's this particularly famous example by Peter Schultzer. He had a very, very difficult proof that he wasn't 100% sure of. He would try and say, well, this is true, and you should know this, Lean. And Lean would say, I didn't know this at all. You're going to have to explain this better. The bits where he had been uncomfortable with what he'd written, it was where it asked the most questions. So he felt, OK, that was verification. It was sensibly asking the right questions. So it's an exciting time. The question is, will machines change mathematics? How do you get computers to lead you in a proof? Not just follow you or make suggestions, but prove things itself. 
This is something in its infancy. A lot of the work on computer-generated proofs up to now has not done much of consequence. I'm very interested within itself, but not in the bigger picture. But there are some very interesting, exciting new ideas, which one has some optimism that we may see the start of generating interesting new proofs. And so this starts to become a little frightening. I mean, we value our profession, we value our work by the profundity of proofs. But if we can rely on a machine to get all the details right, most of the details right, then who are we? What is our training? What is it that we value? So when we don't need to think about proof, then we're not going to be trained in thinking about proof. So who are we going to become? We're going to become more like physicists, probably, and say any old nonsense and just hope the computer verifies it. I think it's very hard to predict what even will be the point of doing mathematics in 30, 40 years' time. The idea of computer-generated proofs, these present new possibilities. Over time, we see, of course, more and more things that computers are able to do, um, and it's very unclear what limits there are.